A very good evening to you and welcome to RTV News with me, Fiona Mbabazi. Government officials have reiterated the need to heighten vigilance among the members of the general public in regards to the compliance to COVID-19 prevention measures, especially during this festive season. Ilan Tashobya kicks off tonight's edition with the details. According to Health Minister Dr. Daniel Ngamije, the recent spike in COVID-19 infections in Rwanda is due to non-compliance to the set standard operating procedures to contain the spread of the virus. People have become non-compliant to the set COVID-19 guidelines. This is down to different reasons. Some have come up with their own standard operating procedures, contrary to the ones set up by health authorities, claiming that COVID-19 has been weakened. This is after some restrictions were eased, including the reopening of schools, public transport buses. Some people thought the pandemic had been put under control as we wait for the vaccine. Such kind of careless behavior has led to an increase in new cases. The Rwanda Premier League was stopped on its third match day, while other sporting activities have been put on red alert as COVID-19 numbers continue to shoot high. Sports Minister Oror Munyanga Rumimoza says the Football League was suspended after some teams intentionally broke COVID-19 restrictions. Espoir FC and Bujesera FC played their game in Rusizi, but later we found out that Bujesera FC players did not undergo COVID-19 test. We also established that AS Mohanga played a tensor, yet players of AS Mohanga had not been tested as well as the incident that took place in Rubavu, where Rusiro FC played Real Sport before the results had returned for Real Sport players. Results for some four players returned positive, but they were already in the field. They could not be withdrawn from the game for isolation. Some teams and players also forged COVID-19 results. Consequently, the cabinet meeting that met on Monday Resolved to suspend the Football League and other social gatherings. Police spokesperson C.P. John Bosco Cabera, based on that, to urge the general public to be vigilant and adhere to COVID-19 control measures. On 25th December this year, it will be Christmas Day, just like it will be on the same day next year. On January 1st, it will be the New Year's Day but we'll also have the same day next year. Christmas and New Year's days will come and go. All we need to do is to be vigilant and respect the set guidelines to be able to celebrate next festive holidays with our families and loved ones. People should not be short-sighted. The cabinet meeting also resolved to put on hold all wedding ceremonies. However, local government minister Professor Shaka Anastas said there is a window for some couples that had traveled from the diaspora to hold their civil wedding in Rwanda prior to the new government directives coming into force. We encourage such couples to speak to sector officials to wed them, but they are not allowed to hold wedding receptions. Civil wedding is a public service that is provided for by the law and a couple must be accompanied by two witnesses. That is the service we are offering someone who travelled from abroad for that specific public service, that is civil wedding. They can be offered that service but they must not hold wedding reception because that is not allowed for now. If they want, they can wait until next year. <laughs> During a post-cabinet press conference held at Prime Minister's office, authorities revealed that in just one day after the new COVID-19 directives came into force, about 300 people were found in 85 bars across the country, while 2,500 were apprehended for moving past curfew hours, including 128 vehicles, while some 2,000 people were arrested for not wearing face masks properly. Reporting for RTV News, Ethan Tashovia. Now, the issues of conflict and insecurity in some of the countries in the East African region are among the topics being discussed at the five-day joint summit of the East African Standby Force that is taking place here in Kigali. Innocent Mugabo with more. 
from the chiefs of defense staff. It is the 28th meeting of the Eastern Africa Standby Force ESF. The issue of terrorism is among the matters on the table as an issue they say poses a threat to regional and international security in general. As a body in charge of security and peacekeeping the East African region, the Eastern Africa Standby Force ESF is one of the five most active units of the African Standby Force ESF, which is made up of soldiers, police and civilians, where one of their responsibilities is to deal with acts of insecurity. All of these are always ready to respond promptly based on emergency response guidelines for peacekeeping operations in the region. Brigadier General Getashu Shefro Pfizer, the ESF director, says that the group has already made some progress in its missions. You can see the achievement of ESF in two parts. Number one, uh, achieving the full operational capability since 2014. It means that uh, ESF is... Uh, since that ESF is ready to deploy uh, to make its mandate, if the mandate is given by AU and uh, our leaders, this is one of the achievements. Uh, regarding this, uh, we are able to do uh, 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 capacity building in our uh, component, uh, means that uh, military, police and the civilian, so this is one of the achievements. Once you had attained the uh, full operational capability, uh, is maintaining the force is one of the key and the one of the important thing for uh, ASF Secretariat. The Army Chief of Staff of the Rwanda Defense Force RDF, Lieutenant General Jean-Jacques Mopenzi, says that there are various obstacles the East African region continues to face based on conflicts that also affect the security of the region. Our region continues to face challenges of conflict that impact peace and stability in some of our member states. Acts of violence, terrorism and violent extremism, particularly in the Horn of Africa and the Eastern DRC, continue to impact the region and call for concerted effort. The ESF has made several achievements during the last 13 years including attaining full operating capability and contributing to capacity building of our forces in terms of training. It is important that these achievements are maintained and consolidated. It is therefore our, in our interest that we move forward speedily but in pragmatic and professional manner in order to reinforce the large efforts of a continent organization, the African Union. I have full faith that with the political will ex exhibited by our strategic leaders, that the amount of resources put into, into this organization over theirs, we should be able to achieve our goals. It is a joint meeting of senior security and peace leaders in the East African region, preceded by a two-day joint meeting of security experts. This Wednesday, the meeting brought together senior military and security officials that will be followed by a meeting of the ministers of defense and security. The ESF consists of 10 countries, including Burundi, Comoros, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Seychelles, Somalia, Sudan and Uganda. Since April 2013, the Republic of South Sudan has been participating in the organization's activities as an observer and will be a member in the future. Innocent Mugabo, RTV News. Thank you, Innocent, for that story. Now, experts in air pollution have called on parents and schools to be very careful while selecting buses that transport the students to schools, noting that old cars that emit gases could have adverse effects on the children's health. Now, according to statistics, one in four children across the world die before the age of five as a result of air pollution. On Tuesday morning, school going children at Kigali Parents School, Ikungwe Ganza Kaida, and Pacific Irakose are carrying out air pollution assessment in their school compound. They believe that young people risk contracting respiratory diseases due to air pollution. As young people, we are concerned that some of the old cars emit dangerous gases which can affect us, especially those suffering from asthma and other respiratory infections. I have and I had um, 
this flow I had um sinezit I'm a sinezit and I was sick of it so if the weather would change if the weather would change I would get sick the director of Kigali Parent School Buzare Geshem underlines that children are prone to develop respiratory diseases and partly blames it on old vehicles that emit pollutant gases. Peak hours in the morning hours, especially in the morning when parents are rushing to go to work, you find many parents do not switch off their engines. They just step at their brakes and then they want to drop their children as they continue going to work. So that fume that comes out is very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous. We are going to encourage our parents, whenever they reach here, at least to switch off their engines so that they reduce the, 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 the kind of uh, the fumes that will come out of their exhaust pipes to reduce the, the, the air pollution. Otherwise, it's a very big problem. Because I believe to emit the most amount of pollutant gases. Drivers of school buses say they have been careful in servicing their cars to limit emissions. Cars that were manufactured before 2005 are usually in good shape. They don't emit gases. Such issues have been addressed with increased awareness to service cars regularly. Dr. Francois Winyendi, Division Manager, Non-Communicable Disease at Rwanda Biomedical Center, told Arabia that respiratory diseases are some of the diseases that kill the biggest number of infants in Rwanda. We know very well that air pollution has adverse effects on children's health, such as causing respiratory diseases, stunting and asthma. Respiratory diseases kill the biggest number of infants in the country. Dr. Ejid Kalisa, a researcher at the University of Rwanda, outlined some of the measures that could be taken to address the issue of air pollution. So one of the measures we are proposing is actually to locate it, the drop-off uh, far away to the school entrance so that all the pollution coming from the vehicle in the idling or the school bus, which is actually another issue because if you look, most of the school buses are very old. With other measures, is basically to encourage uh, students and the parents to allow the students to kind of walk. If they live to the walkable distance to the school, there's no need to use their private car. They can uh, let the students walk all the way through the school. And that can improve in the health of the children, uh, as well as they could, could encourage the public transport. So if they have a clean uh, buses, uh, it will be a good way so to transport the children through the common public transport because they will reduce several number of private cars dropping off uh, in the morning time, pick up in the afternoon. Available statistics show that one in four children across the world die before the age of five as a result of air pollution. Reporting for RTV News, Ethan Tashavia. The parliamentary plenary session that sat on Wednesday in an extraordinary sitting has approved three draft laws which provide access to acquisition of grants and concessional loans to finance the project on the second phase of the development of cities in their country. They include the draft law on grants between Rwanda and the International Development Bank amounting to 8,072,380,000 dollars. US dollars. The third draft law regards the approval of the agreement between Rwanda and the International Development Agency, IDA, in regards to the granting to the Rwandan government an amount of 52.9 million uh, US dollars and a concessional loan amounting to 7.9 billion. Now, the state minister in the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning, Dr. Uwera Claudine, says this project aims at putting up infrastructures such as water and electricity, especially in the secondary cities of the city. Progress, it has
So far, the project has reached to 70 percent, and the rest of other projects will be completed during the first phase by the end of June 2021. We've managed to achieve what we had set ourselves to attain in this project, and with this grant, this project shall expand. At first, we had support from different institutions with proper monitoring. We have hoped that this project shall help us achieve more in urbanization. The parliamentary plenary session also kicked off the process to approve the draft law on the functionalities of the cooperative and solution of the underlying challenges in cooperatives. Now, the Rwanda Development Board has signed a memorandum of understanding with Trade Enabler DP World to launch its new global B2B and B2C e commerce platform, now Dubai.com in Rwanda early next year. Now, the decision to launch the Dubai.com in Rwanda follows the country's consistent superior annual rating at the World Bank's global ease of doing business rankings and its commitment to international trade and investment. Rwanda will become DP World's hub for expanding e-commerce across the East African community and beyond. Rwandan businesses will also benefit from the broader DP World services and investment that will help to facilitate the development Tread. RDB CEO Claire Kamanzi said that the signing of the MOU with DP World was a significant boost to the efforts in supporting the development of a digital economy while working closely with the private sector. What we see as um, the products that we could immediately uh, bring onto this uh, platform includes coffee, tea, horticulture, and horticulture from fresh um, you know, vegetables to chilies or even fruits. But we also see potential in the future to add new products like uh, I know um, UAE and other countries import a lot of beef and we have a very big project of beef uh, that's coming up um, next year. Hopefully that could be something we can add in the future. Maybe also add uh, Made in Rwanda products. We have a, s a several list of products that are Made in Rwanda, including fashion, ETC. Hopefully at some point uh, those are also some of the products we can work together to see how we can add onto the platform. But immediately we see coffee tea and horticulture as the quick ones. Now the CEO of the DP World, Mahmoud Albatstaki, said that investing in Rwanda was a good choice because of the ease of doing business and of course the strong bilateral ties that the two countries share. Are having a very good relationship with us. Politically, we are in an excellent relationship. What distinguishes us, DP World, is in six continents. DP World is continuously growing. So we play in a, many players. So DP World e-commerce, it's just, I would say, completing the value add that we have to the world. What else distinguish us? It's our aspiration to make a difference. Others might do it for the pure money. We do it for a pure futuristic a relationship with countries that at the end will bring value to both sides and we look of promoting the country's product maybe other e-commerce players they're just purely for the business they don't look of promoting the products opening a new market of course, DP World has already invested in a world-class port and logistic facilities right here in the country demonstrating its strong belief in Rwanda's future now, after the sinking of around 245 bags of cement in Lake Kivu on the 28th of October, paralyzing construction works of schools on Gombo Island in Rusizi District, parents and teachers at the school and island are now calling on authorities to intervene to see that this matter is solved on time. Boat carrying around 245 bags of cement sank on Lake Kivu, paralyzing construction works of schools on Nungombo Island in Rusizi District. The accident occurred on October 28th off the shores of Lake Kivu. Students decry the suffering they have to go through since the accident. Sometimes I don't eat anything all day because I live far from our school. Sometimes I also bring money for lunch. Zaymana Venust is the teacher representative at the school. He describes the current situation. There are very few students now as others have returned home for the lunch break. 
those who decided to stay live very far away from the school, so they decide to go home after the classes. Some bring food and others bring nothing due to lack of enough capacity. All this is a challenge that prevents some of the students from doing well in the classroom. The cement was meant to facilitate the completion of six buildings at Mhombo Foundation School and the school kitchen as part of the ongoing government program to build new classrooms countrywide. Parents and teachers at Mhombo Island are calling on authorities to send new cement and other needed construction materials to complete the affected school construction works. Children are not having their lunch at school. The kitchen was into plans of renovation with the government's assistance. Unfortunately, we can no longer prepare food for the children. And in the afternoon, it is almost impossible for some to attend classes. We request support to speed up the construction activities. It would be appreciable if the contractor who had brought the summit in collaboration with the authorities of the sector and the district in general could sit together and find a solution to this problem so that the kitchen of the school can be built as soon as possible. Kayumba Ephraim, the mayor of Rusizi district, reassures the residents of Umhombo that local authorities will make sure the construction works are completed before the end of this month. The board cap size carrying about 250 bags of cement. We are negotiating with the contractor to compensate the lost cement because it was an accident and we cannot incur the losses. But that has not affected construction works. We have been supplying small amount of cement to meet small construction needs. We are confident that by 20th December, most construction works will be complete to meet classroom needs and the school kitchen to facilitate the school feeding program. Well, on behalf of the entire news team that made this news possible, led by my news director, jean Murenzi, and cameraman, Buddha Twaigo, thank you very much for being part of us. My name is Fiona Mbabazi. Have yourselves a lovely evening and a good night. And do remember that you play a very important role in flattening the COVID-19 curve in the country. So play it right. <laughs>